Hi, my name is Curtis, and for this contest, I decided to make a program that would both solve and generate Sudoku puzzles. For solving strategies, I went to sudokuwiki.org. I'll explain some of the strategies right now. The first are just simple elimination strategies. In this example, the 8 must go here because it cannot go anywhere else in this section. The same with the 4. It must go here because it cannot go anywhere else in this row. In this example, only one number can go in this cell, the 5. Therefore, the 5 must go here. If cells exist in pairs, that means the numbers must go in these two cells. So these cells cannot have a 1 or a 6. If two numbers can only go in two cells, then that means they must go in two cells. So therefore, other numbers can be eliminated from those cells. The same exists for triples. They're just slightly more complicated. I'd also like to note that puzzle sizes, even though a Sudoku puzzle is normally 9 by 9, it can actually be any square number. For example, 16 by 16 or 25 by 25. For my solution, I took an object-oriented approach. I started making a Sudoku board class. By defining something as a Sudoku board, it means that it will have methods and properties associated with it. Methods that I created, such as toString. So I can simply call fprintf a.toString, and it'll print a nice looking board. I then defined a method that would backtrack through the board so I could generate full boards. So if I call a equals or b equals a.fill board, then it will fill the board. Obviously, this is just so you can see how it works. Every time, it doesn't actually print the board. So if we get rid of that delay, we can see that the backtracking method is actually randomized, and it'll generate a different solution every time. It's also very fast. If you examine this board, you can see that every row, column, and section contains the numbers 1 to 9. I defined a method that could check that. So we simply call a.rulesfollowed. It will check that and returns 1. Now, if you were to change the board of A so that the first entry was something other than a 3, such as a 5, then the rules followed would no longer be true. I next created a solve board method, which solves the board in a similar way described earlier. I also created a method which allows boards to be loaded in from a text file, such as this one. The solve board method looks something like this. Every number it places on the board it knows has to go there. It will never guess. I also create a generate board method. If we generate a board from this solution using the generate method, it's a completely different puzzle compared to A, but it has the same solution. The generate method works off of the solve method. It's reverse engineered. So it starts with the solve board and will only remove a number if it can be solved back using the other method. The majority of the Sudoku board class was finished by mid-February. After that, I began working on a user interface. First one was based in the console and finished at the beginning of March. It has many features, including allowing the user to generate boards of different sizes and different difficulties based on what methods are allowed to solve the board. The user can then try and solve the board by entering in numbers and can check if they've made a mistake or not. You can also save the board to a file or see the solution. The user can also enter in puzzles of their own for the program to solve, and then have the program solve it. Next, I began working on a graphical user interface, which I finished by mid-March. Also allowed the user to generate puzzles from a completed puzzle, which allows for faster puzzle generation. Note, however, that although these methods will solve most Sudoku puzzles, they will not solve all of them. These puzzles, when you click solve, it'll show you how far the solve methods got, and then ask if you want to use a backtracking method. A backtracking method will always be able to get a solution to a puzzle. Also note that generating larger boards can take a very long time. That's why I included a progress bar in generating these larger boards. In it, you can see how many empty locations are on the board, and you can also see that that grows. That's because the generate method is removing entries from the solve puzzle. Clicking cancel will simply stop this and result in an easier board. And that's it. Thanks for watching.